Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing something slightly different to my usual streams. I am going to be giving you guys a tutorial in Blockbench. I know this is something that lots of people have been asking me for. People have been DMing me over Discord about different ways that I can help them and I'm always happy to help you guys but making a video is probably a much easier way for me to kind of communicate with you guys and help you guys out. So I hope this tutorial series can actually teach you something. So with that, let's just get into it. So this first episode, I'm just basically going to give you a explanation about the Blockbench layout, all the different tools you have, and we will go from there. So to start off with, we have the file panel at the top here. Now the setting project. This will allow you to name your file and your mob geometry. So I'm going to make a dog, so I'm going to call the file name dog. The same goes with the mob geometry name. You don't have to worry about this ambient occlusion yet because this is going just to be a basic tutorial. I'm not going to go into anything in too much detail right now or too advanced. This is just to give you guys a basis to start learning the program and start modeling, hopefully. Now your texture size here, which you can edit. Uh, depending on if you want a higher resolution than normal Minecraft, lower, whatever you want. And here you can obviously confirm or you can turn your model into a block model. Basically what I have at the moment is the setup for an entity model, which is used for bedrock based Minecraft. So anything like Pocket Edition, Windows 10 Edition, those are all block bench based whereas Java is just the original Minecraft Java edition. So block models are things that you have to use for Java edition and entity models is what you have to use for bedrock edition and since I work on the marketplace which is only on bedrock edition I use entity models so I will not be covering block models in this series although lots of the skills you can probably transfer across. So now what I can do is create a new entity model, not model as that's Java edition, entity model is what I want. I'm going to call it dog, same with the mob geometry name and I'm going to confirm. And now we have set up our file. So other options that you have under this file is recent, so recently I've been doing some dinosaur stuff so I've got my recent dinosaur files here which I could open. Open model will just allow you into your file explorer import if you already have a model open you can add another model or an extruded texture export always remember to export your models guys if it's a bedrock entity obviously export it as a bedrock entity if it's a java entity obviously export it as a java entity these two are things you won't necessarily have to worry about if you're trying to implement your model into minecraft they're kind of some more advanced settings which i'm not going to go through right now and also obviously your save, you have your settings here. Obviously this is, there's a lot of personalization here so I'm not gonna go over it all, but very simply, I use a small grid and a large grid. That's what you'll be seeing on my layout here and the default UI colors. So all of this is all customizable, which is obviously something you guys can look into more and find what suits you best. The about page is just about the program, which is obviously Blockbench created by Janice. Lovely chap very helpful, very good at what he does. So obviously visit his website if you want to download the program, the bug tracker if you have find any bugs, which do happen unfortunately as they do with every program. So definitely go and check that out, especially his Discord. This is how I first learned how to model was through asking questions on his Discord. Very, very helpful and I would have definitely advise it. All the links will be below just for reference. Then we obviously have our updates panel and our donate little option here. So those are obviously self-explanatory. Edit panel has undo and redo, add a group, which will be down here, which I'll go into a little bit more in a bit. Select and invert select. This move relative is just to do with how your blocks move. If they move along the actual axis or if they move parallel or perpendicular to where your cube is, if that makes sense. But again, I'll go over that later. Transform is just about scaling your cubes, rotating them, flipping them, centering them, and properties. So if I wanted to rotate a cube, this is an easy way to rotate it 90 degrees. 
if I wanted to flip it, so I wanted the leg on both the left and the right side, I could flip the left leg onto the right side so we have two legs which are in the right positions without having to, you know, fiddly flip it over ourselves. Center will just allow you to center a cube along one of the axes, so if I said X, it would center along this X axis here. I'll cover this in more detail later. Filter, so under filter you can add in plugins, so these are all the ones which are available to you. Currently I don't have many installed, I don't really use plugins an awful lot, but the ones which I always install is Plaster by Janice, which basically fixes texture bleeding, which is something you might come across, and Texture Editor by Janice as well, which you can manipulate images, change the hues, the contrast, the saturation. It's basically a really good tool if you're colouring slightly off and you just want to touch it up a bit without having to open Photoshop or another image editing software, you can just do it through this. As well as Shape Generator by Dragon Master, which is also a very helpful tool if you have trouble creating circles out of cubes, which, funnily enough, isn't as easy as it may sound. <laughs> so next we have the view, and this is basically whatever you want your view to be. You can zoom in and out here, or you can also use the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can full screen, toggle wireframe, toggle quads view. All of this stuff is things that you guys can explore and find out what you like the best. Generally, I just like plain old simple. I don't like to use, you know, quad view because it doesn't work for me, but that basically gives you an overhead view, an isometric view, a, I believe this is side and this is front or the other way around, but basically it lets you look at all different views at once and move them all in individually. So that's pretty cool if that's what you're into, but personally I just like this and I like the freedom of being able to move around. Something I guess I should cover is you can left click to change the direction in which you're looking and right click to move it left to right and such. But here you have your actual tools. So we have the move tool, which I will just show you how it works by creating a new folder and a new cube within that folder. So the move tool just lets you move it along this axis here or this axis one at a time. So you can position it wherever you want. You can press shift in order to move it by 0.25 of a pixel if you want to be more specific. Control can move it 0.1 of a pixel. And if you hold them both down at the same time, you can control it by moving it 0.05 of a pixel. So you can get very accurate and little details by doing this. That's very simply that move tool, which you can also use these coordinates here to move your things around if that's what you prefer, if you'd rather not drag it. Next you have the resize tool, so you can make this as big or as small as you want. You can change the sizes in all three directions, which you can also use this tool for if you want to increase it or decrease it this way instead of pulling it, that's completely up to you. And you have an inflate tool here. So something to watch out for is using decimal points when you're coming to making your cubes. This can cause problems when you're auto-generating textures later on. So generally it's best to avoid any decimal points in your sizes, especially for bedrock entities because of how it then generates the texture it can be very buggy, it can cause all sorts of problems, so generally try and stick to whole numbers. But if you do want to have those smaller decimal points, again you can use shift and control to have some more accuracy there. But if you do really need the cube, just 0.1 or whatever of a pixel smaller, you can use the inflate tool here. And if you just type in, for example, minus 0.1, it will take 0.1 off all sides of the cube. So that, in a way, you can kind of cheat the system and get a slightly smaller cube. But generally, if you can help it, don't use decimals. It can get messy. Next, we have the rotate tool. Now, something to note about this is you can only use it on folders or subfolders also called groups or bones, however you like to call it. So if I wanted to move this cube here, I'd have to go on the actual group it's in, and then I could rotate it. If I then wanted to add another cube into it, which is over here, 
and I just wanted to rotate this cube here, I'd have to put it into a new group and then I could rotate this independently. But because this group is a subgroup of the main group up here, if I clicked on this big cube, for example, it would select the entirety of that group and move it all together. So you have to be careful about the way that your bones and your groups are laid out, otherwise you can cause yourself problems when trying to rotate. But a good rule to have is just anything that you want rotated has to be in a group. Next you have the pivot tool, very simply this just moves the origin of where your cube will rotate from. So if I move this out further here, away from this cube, it would then have to rotate around this point here, like so, or if I moved it closer inside the cube, more like the middle, it would rotate around that point instead. So this can just give you more accurate turnings and it can be a lot easier when it comes to animating further down the line. Now a vertex snap is a very cool and very useful tool. If I was to just be moving this by myself, I may not be able to perfectly line this up with this cube, I might be having troubles, might have to really zoom in or do some calculations to make sure it all lines up. With the vertex snap tool, all you have to do is click on the corner you want lined up, click on the other cube and click on whatever corner you want this to line up with. So I want this corner here to line up with this corner here. So I would just click this and boom, perfectly aligned which is a lot more difficult if you are just trying to do it by eye or trying to work it out yourself. Very useful tool. Now I can move on to this texture box down here. So when creating a texture, you can just press this create texture tool. You want to give it a name. I'm going to name it dog, even though it really doesn't look like a dog right now. By selecting this template tool, it will basically look at the cubes you have and generate a template for your texture based around that super helpful really easy no more fiddling about this compressed template is really important at the end of your texture making you should always compress your templates or your textures to make sure that your file size are as small as possible for obvious reasons i usually wait till the end so i have a little more freedom of the space i have for you know if i want to add in a cube or something later down the line if i compress the template i won't have any space for that I'll explain that in more detail later if that doesn't make sense. So let's just confirm that. And here you have your texture. If I click on this cube, you can see it up here. So it's generated this large cube in this area here, and this little cube down here. Now I can paint either directly onto this UV, or I can paint directly onto here. It depends how you prefer to work. Generally I find it's easier to paint straight onto these cubes. And with that, we'll move on to the paint tab at the top. See, we have three pages here. Not one, not two, but three. So if we go into the paint page, we have the paint brush. This has two brush modes. It has both round and noise. And you can choose the color here on this little color palette. So left to right is obviously about saturation. So on the right, you're gonna have your brightest, most colorful colors. And on the left, you have you know your whites or your very dim colors. Up and down is about light, so the very top is obviously going to be the lightest and the bottom the darkest, it's just all going to be black down here. Um, on this right area here, you can change the hue, so if you want a red, you can go up to this red area, select whatever colour you want, and then you can paint with it right onto your cube. Now you also have the option to increase the size, increase the opacity, which is basically how transparent it is. So if I put it down, it'd be very see-through, it wouldn't have much of a strong effect. The softness is just whether or not it's a hard kind of three by three square here, or if it's like kind of a softer, so it's soft around the edges and it's nice for shading and for trying to create gradients. It just depends on what you need from your texture. Your paint block, it comes in multiple options as well face which will just fill in the entirety of a face, colour which will fill in this entire colour instead of the whole face and cube which will fill in the entirety of the cube like so. The eraser you can just 
erase textures entirely. So like here, you can see it's going to be turning see-through, which is kind of crazy and it's something which is actually possible in Minecraft now with some clever devving. Again, you can change the opacity and the softness. Next, you have the color picker. So if I, for instance, wanted to work with this color green, I would just click on the color picker and the green and I've picked up that color exactly. You can also use key bindings. So for this, usually I press Alt and then I click a color to get that color. That's easiest for me rather than having to go up here every time, but you can find what works for you and work that out. When it comes to saving your texture, you're gonna to want to save it as a PNG file, which is what Minecraft uses to apply the texture to the models in game. And that's very simply it for textures. I will obviously go into more depth in a later video of how to actually, you know, make your texture and make it beautiful. So the third and final page is your animate page. Now, this is probably the most complicated part of Blockbench, especially for those who are very new to it. I mean, I'm new to it myself, so I'm not an expert, but later on in the series, I will explain how you can create kind of simple animations. Very simply, you have keyframes along the second. So generally what I have this setting on at the moment is 30 keyframes per second. I'll explain all of this later on but along here is your time, and then you have to set where your positions are, where your rotations are. You can change the playback speed if you want to look at your animation slower, which can make you kind of catch little details you may not miss if it's full speed, etc., etc. I'll come back to this later on, don't worry. And with that, that's basically this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see the rest of the series. Next episode we're actually going to start getting into modelling, I'm actually going to show you guys how to create your first model, go through the processes I do in order to make it, so make sure to subscribe to keep up to date with that. Make sure to follow our Twitter at everbloomen, links are down below, as well as my Twitter at ninjamastermc. Thank you guys for watching and I hopefully see you next time.